Great to see everybody. Welcome to a terrific day of uh, college basketball. Michael Regai alongside my partner, Nate Ross. All right, we see these two basketball teams. They love to go up and down. Nate, we're going to see a, a lot of trap pressure shooting the basketball, and both ball clubs coming off wins in their openers. If you're ready for an exciting basketball game, hang in there. This is going to be 94 feet up and down the floor. All right, let's take a look at what you have in store here on ESPNU today in the first round of the tournament after Houston and VCU. Long about 11.30 Eastern time, Marist and Miami go after one another. Then that uh, battle of the, the Eastern supremacy is Temple and Providence about 2.30. And then the day winds up in the finale of four, College of Charleston. Bobby Kremen stangles uh, with John Pelfrey and the Arkansas Razorbacks. Our star watch today, you're going to be thrilled at the exploits of Deion Dow, one of the finest long-range shooters in the country for Houston, coming off a big night against Warhead State. And how about Eric Maynard, one of the most decorated Nate point guards in all of America. Dow is a scorer and a rebounder, but most importantly for Coach Penders, he's an athlete. And the other guy, Maynard, cool, calm, and collected. A point guard leading seven freshmen. He's got to do it for his team to be successful in their conference. And he hit a game winner with less than two seconds left in the first round of the NCAA tournament to beat Duke last March. Let's take a look at our 10 on the floor for the Houston Cougars. Keep an eye on Robert McKeever. McKeever, who uh, is a first-team conference USA a member, and he, along with Tafari Tony, Tafari Tony, a uh, growing by leaps and bounds in his game. And for VCU, Jamal Schuler compliments Eric Maynard with uh, excellent shooting and scoring ability out of the backcourt and Will Femini brings the toughness and the physical presence to VCU. Well, when you talk about college basketball coaching at its finest, you're looking at Tom Pender, 16 wins away from 600 in his career. He's already eighth among active head coaches. We're just thrilled at our conversation with him. And Anthony Grant, 28-7 last year, and took VCU to the NCAA tournament. Settle back and enjoy it. It is a pre-holiday treat Thanksgiving style here in Puerto Rico as the Rams of VCU with a basketball first uh, dressed in the white. Will Femini and Michael Anderson both had trouble controlling. Turn it over and give it to Houston. Doug Shows along with uh, Terry Moore and Tim Gattis, the officials today as we get underway in the first of four here on ESPNU out of San Juan. Two teams using the whole court. They're getting the money's worth. 94-foot both teams will press man-to-man -man all the way, probably. It's uh, Robert McKeever and Lanny Smith in that Houston backboard and uh, Tom Pender's ball club. Put 83 points on the board and uh, beating Moorhead State in their opener. Now this is Dion Dowell as that shot clock will come to eight. Dowell baseline hard. Robert McKeever off the mark on that triple try. The VCU switches all man-to-man -man screens because they're all athletes. They're relatively the same size. They can get away with it. Now, Eric Maynard, he is a Koozie Award nominee, denoting the finest point guard in all of America. And there, though, he got hit with a five-second call. But, hey, how about the pressure defense on the ball from the 6'3 senior, Lanny Smith, Nate? That's what Houston wants to do. They want to turn you over. They want to pressure you into turnovers. That's a turnover for the Houston program. Couldn't start your offense, couldn't get anything going, and you just stood there for five seconds. Turnovers, Coach Ross, they forced 28 of them with 12 steals in that win over Moorhead the other night. They're unbelievable. That's both teams do, and both teams lead the nation in it last year. We'll see if they can do it again this year. Uh, Deion Dowell got shut off by Michael Anderson, and that is going to be a timeline violation. One to one in turnovers. Here we go. Well, you you got that, Mark. You're going to notch those uh, all day long, There's aren't you? There's going to be a bunch of them. They, they just get in your face defensively. The key for both coaches is we're going to beat you in the last 10 minutes because we're going to wear you out. We'll see who wears out best. Conditioning might be a factor here. Well, the young man who wears number 23 for Houston, Landy Smith, he really has been anticipating this uh, matchup uh, as he will battle Eric Maynard, as we said, uh, one of the top decorated two-point guards in the game. Excellent drop step from Will Fanini, but he didn't get it to stay in the cup for him. Great patience. He's got to finish it. Lanny Smith had to kick it up. McKeever will attack the rim, and he got sent away by Michael Anderson twice. But uh, on uh, that second contact, Anderson will get hit well, with we, a VCU foul. We talked to the coaches. Anderson's been a pleasant surprise by blocking shots, normally without fouling somebody. Here, he'll get the block on the first one. He kind of shoved the defender into him. Gets a block on that one, and then on the second one's when he commits the foul. Michael Anderson, that 6'7 junior out of Virginia Beach. You get a good look here at uh, Robert McKeever. McKeever, the 6'3 senior out of New Haven, Connecticut. 
part of the country that Tom Penders, of course, very, very familiar with. Penders, one of the uh, the finest high school athletes ever in the state of Connecticut. Great baseball player. Yes, he was. But we'll embellish a little bit later on. And of course, coached the Rhode Island very successfully, so he knows the area. So Robert McKeever with a couple of makes at the free throw strike. McKeever, 19.4 rebound performance in the opener. Win over Moorhead State. Well, VCU looking for their first hoop at the offensive end. Trying to go strong baseline for the Rams. Frank Dongo has checked in. He talked about Lanny Smith. He knows about Maynard. He read about him, and you're right. He accepts the challenge. Mm -hmm. A check clock at five, red alert time. This is Michael Anderson, and he will stick that three with the shot clock running out. Well, the ball screen is the play of the 21st century. They doubled the dribbler and left Anderson wide open. Here's the pressure the other way from uh, Eric Maynard oh, on Lanny be, Smith. It's going to be both ways all day. Another ball screen. Well, Tom Penders and, uh, talking to us before this one. So this is all about the ball screens. Uh, before Dion Dowell could knock down that three, you got a whistle. And uh, take that bucket away. As uh, that was a three second violation on Tafari Tony. Yep. Tried to kick it out. He just stood in the lane too long. And they'll call it once, then they won't call it the rest of the night. <laughs> got to call it once. Keep everybody honest. Michael Anderson to raise up again, and he's rung up his second straight three. Where's this coming from? Well, with a great point guard like Maynard, you can see all other VCU guys spot up. Maynard will find you. Anderson's hit the last two. Michael Anderson. Penetrate, and everybody spots up because they're all capable. Well, VCU with a back-to-back -back threes. Lanny Smith got shut off. Oh. Smith had to improvise, and how about that stick back from a flying Deion Dowell? We told you he was an athlete. Unbelievable play. Penetration in the middle of the floor is the easiest way to get to the rim because there's no help side. Great penetration, Dowell with a great tip. Well, Deion Dowell, and Tom Penders uh, told us that he started to expand his game a little bit, not just now a standstill shooter. He had 25 in the win over Moorhead. Well, go had the mismatch, didn't take advantage of it. But Jamal Schuler coming off the screen that lost the basketball and, and you saw DCU's Frank Dongo the young man from the sophomore from Cameroon who is getting early playing time off the bench of Anthony Grant that time Houston switched the screens and Dongo was guarded got by McKeever just didn't take advantage of McKeever much smaller about six seven inches smaller well, Houston to tie it up maybe take the lead on this trip Got the corner turned, and that reach-in foul is going to go on the senior, Will Famini of VCU. McKeever tried to come off the ball screen, switched the other way. Just inside the 16-minute mark. How inviting does that look with temperatures up near 90 degrees? So uh, with the rough weather starting to move into uh, the eastern seaboard, Nate, uh, one of the best locales all over the world right here in San Juan as VCU is off to this early lead uh, by virtue of a pair of Michael Anderson threes. and. We get a look at the uh, the six foot seven inch junior from Virginia Beach. So last year he, he's not hoisting from deep a lot, is he? <laughs> That's a new year. He worked on it over the summer, I am sure. And if they leave him wide open, nobody's been within eight feet of him every time he shot the ball. He drilled two for two from downtown. And you're right, it is absolutely beautiful out here. Woke up this morning, looking at the ocean. You can't beat that. Especially was a little chilly back home. Now, how did you find your way in uh, from the the airport uh, and your trip in? We saw practices yesterday and got a chance to uh, meet all the coaches, have chats with them. Um, on the airport, the Coliseo de Puerto Rico, it's a little bit different experience. Yeah, a little NASCAR action. <laughs> Just got to fend for yourself, pin a number on the rental car and go. There you go. I like that. <laughs> Put the number on the side and uh, yeah, make to. like Jeff Gordon, right? Here comes a little zone press this time by Houston. Last time was man. Got to get somebody to middle. Trying to beat that Ooh, and get that across close. that timeline. Yes, uh, is Frank Dungo. It's unusual. That's the first time Maynard touched it. Against pressure, you got to give Eric Maynard the ball. Well, Lanny Smith uh, so far really neutralizing Maynard. Three times Michael Henderson. No, they got to the shooter this time, and that shot clock will come to eight. Well, Dow's guarding Anderson. He helped out that time he recovered. Dungo with a shot clock at two. Got to get it started. That's a shot clock violation. Or for, wait a minute, they're going to get a whistle as that shot clock was expiring. And that foul is uh, going to go on Houston's Tafari Tony, the 6'8 senior from Brooklyn, New York. 
Jones. That was awful close to, you heard the buzzer in the background, obviously, from the shot clock, but the, the foul occurred first, no, sh no shooting foul. So VCU will just keep the ball under. Yeah, they called it on the floor. Jamal Shula. Well, for me, he had great position, then he bobbled the ball and then go 12 feet away to catch it. Well, that fresh shot clock, Deion Dow with a rip away. Steal for Houston, turnover VCU. A lot of red shirts on that pass. Got to zip the ball in there. The turnover story uh, last year, VCU, is uh, Deion Dow will sweet stroke that three, but going back to the VCU turnovers, one of the top ten in the nation, only gave it up 11 times yeah, a game. Neither team gave it up a lot. Taking care of the ball is a premium thought by both coaches and both systems. Well, Deion Dowell, as we said, who had 25, and Tom Penders will tell you he has uh, one of the real quality deep strokes. Speaking of strokes, Eric Maynard didn't get that jumper to go down. Famini is going to the free throw line. Well, love his game underneath the rack, uh, Nate, is a, a tough physical presence, Will Famini. Big Will Famini is a big body inside, makes his presence felt on the boards. He needs, needs to do a better job posting up. The ball came in, he didn't step to the ball, but he makes his presence felt on the offensive boards. Offensive rebounds are all hard. Got it, got fouled, chance to make the other team pay right here. Houston does a great job on defense. When the ball is passed inside, there's a lot of red shirts flicking it away, knocking it away, and that's what they hurt Firmini with it. But he can do his job on the boards and make everybody pay. Firmini, the uh, six foot seven inch senior out of uh, Cameroon, was a starter for this basketball team last year at VCU. That's, uh, Frank Dongo, head of the bench. Well, Firmini looking to split the pair from the line, and he'll do that to bring VCU back to within two. So for Houston uh, on the floor now is uh, six foot eleven inch uh, junior Marcus Kuzan out of uh, Baltimore. Kuzan checking in. Coach Grant brings in freshman Larry Sanders to combat that. Two big guys in there. Another turnover. It's Lanny Smith who simply lost control of the basketball. Yeah, keep an eye on Larry Sanders. Where's number 21 for VCU? Maynard gave it up. Pretty look, Anderson, and one as we'll go to the free throw line on the Houston foul. That's what we discussed with Maynard. Yeah. Nate, his ability to draw, distribute, kick the basketball. That was on display right there. Yes, he can score, but watch his eyes. Up in the middle, finds the big man, just came in the game and gets the foul. Oh, excuse me, that's Anderson. Didn't just come in. But find, Schuler will find you if you're open. And that's exactly what he did right there. Or Maynard will find you if you're open. Great move by Anderson to score and get foul chance for three. How about the start for Michael Anderson, huh? Already with a couple of threes. And now that, uh, that bucket with the foul is uh, he'll look for nine. Not able to finish off that conventional three-point opportunity. But we're even at nine apiece. A little run by VCU right here. McKeever got in the crowd. Dowell had to give it up, and that left-handed three from Marcus Malone a little bit too strong for Houston. Main a very patient, smart point guard. Wide open again. Michael Anderson trying to ring the bell for the third time. He had another terrific look. Come on, you got to make that. That's another assist. Brock Keith Payne. Sanders made him readjust that. Kuzan with a short jumper that's rebounded by Larry Sanders. Absolutely right. Larry Sanders changed that shot and then got the rebound. Jamal Schuler to raise up. Anderson and Sanders all over the glass. And now Schuler is going to get whistled for that contact and the foul on Houston's uh, freshman out of Dallas, Brock Heath Payne. You, know, you and I talked it may be body clock time. It's 8 a.m. for Houston. Mm -hmm. They're not playing like it. They've adjusted to it the last couple of days. Both teams are getting after it. Well, Nate, what about that? Tom Penders uh, kind of readjusted his schedule as well as to try to keep things as uh, comfortable and similar as possible for Houston. Yeah, they got him up a little early every day. They wouldn't let him take a nap yesterday, so they adjusted the time, which is a two-hour difference from Houston. Marcus Kuzan, again, uh, had a pretty good look at that jumper. So far, it's paid off for him as well because they're ready to play. Really love the way these two basketball teams get after it on the defensive end. Brock Heath Payne got it. He's tripled. Doesn't need a lot of daylight. They love that young freshman. No, that that was that was made in the weight room there. He just bounced off the defender and then settled down and Payne hit the big three. Great play. Maynard with the runner. 
Anderson went glass off the offensive board. Michael Anderson with a 10-point explosion in the first seven minutes plus. And yells at Marcus Kuzan when he makes it. A little intimidation. That's a great play. Well, Michael Anderson with 10 of the 11 on the board as Brocky Payne threw the basketball away. Turnover, Houston. Michael Anderson has been the man so far, not only hitting the threes, but then getting the big-time board inside, and they're going to give him a break right now. Coach Anthony Grant taking him out, but he has done well the first eight minutes of this game. Lance Curse. Yep, Curse, K-E-A-R-S-E, -E, a very familiar name on the... The uh, Freaks cousin. <laughs> the athletic landscape. The cousin of uh, Javon Curse, one of the finest rush defensive ends ever to play in the National Football League. Now Maynard will come off that Sanders high screen. That's going to be a three-second violation, and it's going to result in the VCU turnover. And look at VCU when they run their offense, and they get the ball in the elbow, and they look inside. There's always a release backwards away from pressure. Unfortunately, the postman stayed in the lane too long, but it's well-designed in that there's always a release to get it out away from pressure. Speaking of pressure, here we go. Eric Maynard, Javon Kurse, and also on the floor now for uh, for VCU. Ed Nixon, Nixon, who wears number 50, the freshman out of St. Petersburg. The state of Florida is real good to Anthony Grant on the recruiting side. Look at Larry Sanders. He returned that to sender as uh, he took Deion Dowell and sent him away. There's a freshman that's not playing like one on the defensive end. With this kind of offense, he doesn't have to score points. Do that and rebound, and you're a big factor in their offense. Had three shot rejections. Eric Maynard, degree of difficulty, kissing it off the window. The floater for two. Maynard will apply that pressure on Brocky Payne. Payne went glass. It goes with the Larry Sanders foul. Well, the strength of Brocky Payne. He'll be at the line when we come back. Houston with the lead. Great one going on in San Juan. Houston and VCU uh, here in uh, the early go in uh, the first round, game number one. Billy Donovan, of course, back-to-back -back national championships uh, with the Florida Gators, but look at what it has spawned on the assistant coaching side. Two of the coaches right here in this tournament here in Puerto Rico. The coaching tree right there, and it kind of goes back to Rick Pitino, because that's who was under Billy. Billy Donovan was under Coach Pitino, and the tree continues to grow. So Brock Keith Payne finishing off the three-point opportunity. Uh, Eric Maynard gave it up inside. Pretty good look to uh, Will Femini, and Femini is going to go to the free throw line. And that uh, Houston foul is going to go on Marcus Kuzan, the 6'11 junior out of Baltimore. Perfect way to break the press. The ball never touched the floor until it got in the front court. The only thing Femini could have done is got the layup. He got fouled and a chance for two right here. Nice smooth stroke for a big guy. A lot of big guys have trouble shooting free throws. I think it's because their hands are higher in the rim sometimes and they let it go. That's pretty smooth right there. So that's the Ross assessment on um, what the big fellas have trouble at the line. Well, the air's a little thinner <laughs> up there, too. Yeah. Okay. Now that I'll buy. Here comes pressure. Constant pressure from VCU. After Will Femini with a couple of free throw makes. Dion Dowell to unload that three. Well, Dion won't hesitate. He's always got the, that gun out of the holster and ready to cock it. Well, Virginia Commonwealth coming off that marvelous run in Anthony Grant's first year last season. And this young man with the basketball, large part of the, the effort. And now it's Rocky Payne, though, uh, now with him in the game on uh, Eric Maynard. A little different little strength. Use that strength against but Maynard. Very calm. Sets the offense up. That wasn't a good shot. Fading away. That's not what Coach Graham wants, I'm sure. Yeah, he had to step back. And uh, this foul was going to go on the freshman who's checked in. Uh, Joey Rodriguez, one of the eight recruits out of uh, Florida. Well, there it is for Anthony Grant. And, boy, Anthony Grant, what a sensational job he did last year. And, of course, the school record, 28 wins. Eric Maynard's jumper with less than two seconds left to take out Duke. And then they had a marvelous comeback, Nate. And they were down 19 against Pittsburgh yep. in the second and round. Came back, tied it, sent it in overtime. Anthony Grant, very soft-spoken, very cerebral. Very focused. Yes. Very focused. Very good basketball. 
Mine, obviously learned from Billy Donovan and company of Florida, has one ring, wasn't there for the second one, but uh, went back down to Florida to grab some recruits, so he's got great connections down in that state. Robert McKeever a little bit off the mark on that long three. Yeah, the reason he wasn't there for the second one, he was winning, winning 28 games. games, a school record at VCU. And here's one of his recruits from Florida, Joey Rodriguez. He's a true point guard, and you saw right there. Curse tried to readjust that. Lance Curse again. Lance Curse continuing to stick with it. Marcus Cousin twice bothered Curse's shot, twice didn't foul him. Big time defense to alter the shot and not commit personal foul. The only thing they didn't do, well, they did get the ball back. Went off of, went off of VCU. That's great defense by Cousin. Now, T.J. Gwynn has checked in for the first time, the six-foot-four and sophomore out of Burlington, North Carolina. He wears number 42 in white for VCU. You better keep the programs handy, folks, because both teams play a lot of bodies with this style. You have to look at this. Nixon, strong to the goal. As he slashed his way to the hoop right there. Nice finish. Again, Michael Anderson around that bucket. Uh, his presence has been felt in a huge, huge way. We take a look at Samal Nixon. He saw that that paint open up, and um, he said, Let, let's get there. Great point guard prospect out of New York City from Brooklyn. Did a great job penetrating. And then Anderson at the other end, shooting the free throws now, took it right into the shot blocker. Watch the mile next, and eyes up, everything opens up, take it right to the rim. Coach Kremens like watching that little point guard from Brooklyn. He didn't get him, but uh, Zamal Nixon's going to be a good one for the University of Houston. Lefties have an advantage in this game. They just do. I don't know why, but you're not used to guarding lefties. Zamal Nixon left-handed. Are you a left-hander, Coach Ross? No, I'm not, but I just <laughs> love lefties. They're smoother, too. You never see an awkward lefty play basketball. You just don't. Tied to 17 apiece now. Michael Anderson with a dozen. Here's that relentless pressure from Anthony Grant's ball club. There and is. that is a 10 second backcourt violation. And that's exactly what uh, VCU wants to create. Anthony Grant demands it. Well, they change the pressure up. Sometimes they trap, sometimes they get in your face. That time they trapped about three quarters of the way. They double the ball, they do all kinds of different things. So you don't know what's coming at you, you just know heat's coming at you. Joey Rodriguez now uh, running things in that backcourt. This is T.J. Gwynn, a little bit too strong on his first jumper of the, uh, the day. Brock Heath Payne with all of that strength and delivered with a left hand. What a deluxe offensive game for this young man. Big, strong kid freshman just kept the defender away from him and extended that left arm, put it in. You don't see bodies like that on freshmen normally. He's going to be an asset to them. Right, he was ranked one of the top 15 seniors in the, uh, the basketball hotbed of the state of Texas last year. Averaged almost 25 a game in his senior year in high school. Michael Anderson put it on the floor. Didn't get that to fall for him. Like Kuzan or, or somebody tipped that ball, maybe Dowell. That's Joey Rodriguez for putting a body on uh, Zamal Nixon. Nixon didn't play the other night. He had a stomach virus and uh, sat out the basketball yeah, that's what, that's game. And the coaches told yeah. us. And the uh, the Moorhead State win. You better stay away from some of the hot stuff down here because there's some hot food to give you a little bit of a stomach virus down here. It's great stuff, but if you got a little sensitive, sensitive stomach, Nate, don't go near it. <laughs> oh, we had a uh, marvelous, marvelous meal last night as Tafari Tony will drain that jumper. Of course, Anthony Grant and his basketball team, Tom Penders and his squad. And this is so Riley Auto Parts uh, tip off here in San Juan. Will Famini, he just got swallowed up inside, but the push is going to go on Tafari Tony. So Tony is going to get hit with the Houston personal foul. We've got a timeout on the floor. How entertaining is this? Houston by four, but we get back to San Juan. There's Brock Heath Payne, and as we said, uh, averaged 25 a game last year. Not only doing it uh, with his scoring exploits, Nate, but also getting on the glass for Tom Penders early. Well, the coaches liken him to a, a uh, Tony Parker kind of player. Not to say he's Tony Parker, 
But he's really good, obviously, running the show, but he's better when he gets into the lane. And the two times he's gotten into the lane so far, he's finished with a layup, but he can find open people. But he's got the strength to get by the first body and then bang inside and try to make something happen. Yeah, we were talking to Tom Penders about him yesterday. I, I said, that looks like a strong safety. You know, I like That's those exactly football right. guys. He's 6'2", about 200 pounds. I said, Tom, wait a minute now. I said, Brock Keith is, uh, you know, maybe we get the pads and the helmet on for the Cougars. No, no, no. He said, he's got that body, but I'll keep it about the hoop side. Well, McKeever's got the same body. I mean, it's an asset when the point guards and, and backboard people have that strength to get by somebody. Jamal Schuler just uh, ripped it away from uh, Robert McKeever. So turnover Houston. They keep doubling Maynard, and Anderson's going to burn him like he did early. Big time mismatch inside. Everybody sees it. Will Femini with that foul line jumper that's pure. Well, they tried to help out inside on the mismatch, and Femini just said, you can leave me alone, I'm going to shoot it. Michael Anderson stepping out, hitting a couple of threes. Will Femini. Great recognition by VCU. Now, Nixon got in trouble. This is Dion Dowell to the pull-up. Four white shirts around the basket, and they're going to run. Well, great to have you with us here at San Juan, Puerto Rico for the O'Reilly Auto Parts Puerto Rico tip-off on ESPNU. Houston and uh, VCU alongside Nate Ross. I'm Michael Regai. Our producer Howard Miller, director Skip Hill, and all of our terrific ESPNU crew. Bringing it your way out of... Now go to the free throw stripe will be uh, Will Femini. Where's that number two? Talked about last time Anderson hit the jumper. That time he got it into Femini who didn't make the basket. But post people have to be, now the, the term is bigs. I don't like that term. You don't like the bigs? No, I like post people. <laughs> but post people have to be partners together. They have to look for each other high though, look for each other when they double team. And that time Anderson hit Femini, great offensive rebound. That should never, ever happen if you're Houston. You got inside position and you let somebody grab a rebound like that. Yeah, Tom Penders has given that look to Nick Mosley, the 6'9", sophomore out of Bel Air, Texas. Watch Gwynn just out-muscle people and out-quick, and that should never happen. That's why those blocks are there. You got inside position. That man is not happy about it, but Gwynn's going to try to make it into more points. Those are the kind of things going to turn a game like this because it's going to be close all the way. We look at the, the old 6 7 season and uh, get a good peek at uh, T.J. Gwynn. 6'4", sophomore out of Burlington, North Carolina. You saw the numbers, a big contributor last year. Played about 15 minutes a game. And... Well, the thing for VCU is if you are an athlete and you put forth the effort, you're going to play. Because Coach Grant's going to play a lot of bodies. Mm -hmm. You put forth the effort, you're going to get out there. And it's a team effort, obviously. But when you play this many bodies in this style, as you can see right there, it comes a full court press again. you got to be ready to roll. And speaking of the bodies on the floor, the 6'8 sophomore out of Russia, Kirill uh, Peshelnikov. Now for VCU. How about that move? Uh, sliding his way across the lane. Uh, Zamal Nixon, the freshman out of uh, Brooklyn. I bet you around Coney Island and uh, Bedford-Stuyvesant and all the playgrounds that Nixon made that move about a million times. So, and then he, when somebody said foul, he said, get out of here, foul. <laughs> We're playing on the basketball court here. No foul. Now, Pashelnikov had an opportunity there, but uh, got double teamed and had the basketball raked away. And there's a good look at uh, the young men. You think about that, Nate, coming over to uh, the United States and uh, trying to adapt to culture, society, and, uh, oh, by the way, uh, maintain your, your strong work in the classroom and uh, put a lot of time on the basketball court and play collegiately, too. Not an easy task. He looks like he spent a few minutes in the weight room as well. Quill's a big, strong kid. It's a, I mean, I can just imagine going over to a country that I don't speak the language do that. Very difficult to do. All those foreign kids that come over, you got to give them credit. Great effort, and most of them are great students. When I coach, we had kids from Nigeria, great, great students. Mm -hmm. So Peshelnikov, uh, time on the floor there, uh, rather rather brief. There's a zone press. They switch it up. Oh, uh, good move. Look up the floor, diagonal passes. So Houston will uh, try to get back on top on this trip. Well, look at the swing. Robert McIver will drain that tray. Second rotation is the wide open shot when you get double to The first one went across court. They kicked it out to McIver. The second guy's always open because nobody can move as fast as the ball can be passed once. Twice he's dead wide open, he made him pay. Watch this, back to the corner, out to McIver, nobody there, bingo. Wide open three. First team all conference USA choice. Robert McKeever, you see why. McKeever with the same type of skills. 
that uh, Eric Maynard brings. Tom Penders told us, uh, McKeever, I can give him the basketball, and he can run the show for oh, us absolutely. if necessary. Uh -oh. Wynn made a pretty entry look. Michael Anderson continues to just uh, detonate here in the first half. The end one for Anderson as he'll go right back to the line. Watch inside. They got miscommunication. Dow was playing the ball, and inside, nobody communicated. Malone got messed up about who's guarding who. There you see him right there, Marcus Malone. Anderson wide open, and then a late play to compound the problem. First of all, you didn't cover him. Second of all, you fouled him. How about the first half for Michael Anderson as he'll complete a, another three-point opportunity. Oh, Anderson's so strong. So Paul Nixon had that three rattle out on him, had a real good look at it. Early offense there for, for Nixon and uh, Houston. He's going to get his minutes, man. The freshman's going to get his money. Maynard on the crossover. That floater didn't stay in the hole for him, and the basketball will stay with VCU. It's a tie basketball game, which is hard to believe with all this. You'd think VCU's up. They're playing more aggressively. They're playing a little smarter, but Houston's making the opportune baskets, and that's what it's all about is scoring at opportune times. That man right there is happy with the defense because he's forcing Houston to do something they don't want to do. And we have a little, Anderson looks like he's got a little blood on the elbow or whatever. Trainer will do his job. John Houston over there. They don't want to have to sit Anderson down. I mean, he's just scalding Nate here in the first half. Wrong trainer. Todd Kraft, the trainer for this year. Got to give those guys credit. They do all the thankless jobs. Femini comes in for him. That's not bad. Bring in the big, strong guy. Yeah, so Michael Anderson uh, will get the, uh, the patch job from the VCU athletic training staff. Will Femini back on the floor. We're inside the five minute mark now. As Jamal Schuler tried to bounce his way through the paint, lost it. Give it back to Houston. It's about the third time that the VCU players hit the deck. Pat Rowley had a great quote, which I love. Basketball games are won when the ball's in the air and when the ball's on the floor. If you play for Anthony Grant, you better get on the floor for a loose ball. Pat Rowley has had some other quotes the last couple of days. Brock Keith Payne, <laughs> sensational finish, plus the foul. Brock Keith Payne. What a tremendous performance, and uh, twice now with strength going to the goal to finish in the first half. This is a right-handed player, ladies and gentlemen, with great strength, extends the left arm. Second time he's done that, and chance for a three-point play the weight room way. That weight room must have been a good one in high school because he used it. Payne, four of five. He's uh, connected on uh, the long-range three, but twice with his uh, acrobatic moves on the way to the rim. Not able to cap off that three-point trip. Yeah, just to finish that off real quick, I love Pat Riley said, I'm 63 years old. Exactly. I've got artificial hips. My eyesight's going, but I'll play today better than my players are played as Jamal Schuler uh, went off glass off that great pass for Merrick Maynard. Miami Heat is one in seven, and he's not happy. Watch this. Dion Dow to unload. Had that three in the hole. Dow went and got his own. Brock Keith Payne. Nope. Off the back heel. Well, Houston all over the glass. They're getting great shots in second shots. Look at this. Nixon didn't get it to fall. Dowell with another opportunity. Four chances at the offensive end that go wanting for Houston. That was a little playground move by Nixon up and under and stole it again. What a play. Brock Keith Payne got it to fall off the steal as Anthony Grant says, what is going on in my backcourt? And Anthony Grant standing with hands on hips. He doesn't like it. Next time he's going to let him know about that one. That's just great effort by the Houston Cougars just to get after it. Well, how good has Brock Keith Payne been here in the first half off the bench? Well, we talked about the freshman adding depth to both teams. Payne is out of tremendous depth, heart, and effort for Houston. Well, Houston back on top by a deuce. With Darren and shoot it. TJ, stick it up. And then trying to post up was Will Femini. What about the, that angle on the entry pass, Nate? Tough angle straight down the yep. lane. Femini backed away. All right, Anthony Grant. BCU, Tom Penders in Houston, matching X's and O's. Houston by two. Come on back with us. Back at the O'Reilly Auto Parts, Puerto Rico tip off. The little ones uh, that uh, favor the Rams of BCU enjoying things. What a beautiful smile on that young lady's face. Want to remind you for up to the minute news for everything that is college sports, log on to ESPNU.com. Now, the online service is a gateway to the very best in college sports content from ESPN, combining the latest news, scores, features, video highlights, podcasts, and a whole lot more. If you do not have ESPNU, you 
you better you got to have it be sure to log on to ESPNU.com and type in your zip code at the top of the page or call your local cable operator or satellite provider log on to ESPNU.com today third kind of full court press now it's a one two two it's been a two two one it's been a man now it's a one two two Robert McKeever gave it up into a zone for VC playing a little Odd man front zone. Rocky Payne got his own board, and this time Will Femini made him readjust that, and he came up on the underside of the rim. Yeah, double clutch didn't hit the bottom of the rim. I think he thought Will was going to try to block it. Inside the three minute mark now, Eric Mayner off the slash. Michael Anderson still roams on that perimeter today, and why not? It's been good to him. Heck yeah. He's got McKeever guarding him. They need to go inside to him, right at us. A loose basketball on the deck. Dongo able to recover. Jamal Schuler not able to get off as of yet today. Now Schuler's got a rip away though. Schuler will attack Payne and deliver that uh -oh. tough jumper with the foul on Rocky Payne. Tremendous play. Jamal Schuler of VCU. Both ways, unbelievable effort. Watch Schuler. He misses the shot, gets it. Now watch a little spin in the fadeaway jump shot. And you can see he gets bumped from behind right there. And chance for a three-point play. Great effort both ways. Somebody's going to make an effort play to win this basketball game down the stretch because it's going to be close. I see checking uh, back in for Tom Pender's uh, ball club, uh, Lanny Smith, uh, the six-foot three-inch senior starter. Now, Schuler not able to convert that uh, three-point opportunity. So all even at 30 apiece, and we'll approach the two-minute mark now on this Houston trip to the offensive end. McKeever and Maynard matching number threes, and uh, that late whistle is going to send Robert McKeever to the free throw line. Foul will be on Eric Maynard. We talked about it before. When you get the ball in the middle of the floor, you are on alone on an island playing defense. There's no help side because there isn't a ball side established. And that time, McKeever made a nice little spin move. Maynard bumped him. Yeah, we showed you as uh, we came on the air this morning, of course, all the beautiful pageantry and the sights and sounds of the uh, the welcome reception that was held last night. But everybody was sneaking out and ate a little bit to take a peek at uh, how uh, number one in the land, North Carolina, was trying to ward off Davidson as another uh, David was trying to slay Goliath that we've already seen a lot on the college uh, hoop landscape exactly. here in November. Garden, we have Kentucky all over again for about 39 and a half minutes. I'm sure Bobby Kremens was sneaking away because Davidson <laughs> yep. in his oh, yep. conference and he yep. wanted to see the upset to uh, to give the Southern Conference a little notoriety. Great basketball game last night. Yeah, Bobby was getting the updates. So Robert McKeever splits the pair from the line. Maynard almost threw it away. Frank Dongo is uh, back on the floor, along with Michael Anderson, Will Femini, Jamal Schuler, and Eric Maynard for VCU. Now Dongo is going to load it up. Deion Dowell to take off the Dongo miss. Dowell was really impressive the first couple minutes, and he's kind of been lost in the shuffle here. Yep, turn it over. And Dowell hasn't done a whole lot. Great offensive rebounding, but Dowell needs a good to create points. Jamal Nixon said, I go to the hoop all the time like that in the summers around Coney Island. Yeah, they call Palmer and Coney Island. <laughs> you get the ball right in the face. <laughs> Tom Penders. Tom Penders knows all about that. Yeah, what's Palmer? Palmer, you don't call him the court. It's like calling a reach-in foul. You don't call it on a playground. <laughs> With the chain nets, you just play. Tom Penders was uh, just saying, well, isn't Maynard doing the same thing? Deion Dowell will send Nixon to the hoop. Deion Dow with that good look up the floor and uh, the finish from Zamal Nixon. Flamini getting great post position, but Houston just running around him. They can't play behind him. So they just run around him, slap it loose. Easy two the other way. All right, Houston by three now as we approach the 60-second mark in this uh, very entertaining first half. Look at that double-team trap on Eric Maynard. McKeever and Malone and no foul. That's the most important thing. Trap, but don't foul. Make VCU call timeouts exactly what they did. Well, that is remarkable with the turnover story after last year when they won 28 games. We'll be right back to San Juan. 33 30, uh, Houston on top uh, here. Late in uh, half number one, the O'Reilly Auto Parts Puerto Rico tip off. We do hope you're enjoying it on this. Uh, this Thursday morning, wherever you may be. And here's the turnover story. Now, again, fifth fewest 
in all of the college basketball world last year Anthony Grant's squad has been turned over 11 times by Houston here in the first half seven new freshmen on the team but during the whole time out during the break we watched it very cool very calm you play to the personality of your coach and that's the way they play they don't lose their cool they get in your face defensively but they don't lose their cool and obviously he doesn't like it but he's not going to go crazy about it now he's just going to keep building the confidence because if you turn it over but you get it back on D mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter yeah. well, the CAA coach of the year last year and why not for Anthony Grant of course we mentioned his uh, 10 years with Billy Donovan in Florida but uh, also uh, played his college basketball at the University of Dayton fine college player there in that program he's a great high school coach in Florida too winning state championships Eric Maynard's runner wouldn't stay down for him. Michael Anderson uh, had it stripped away. Nice hands from Houston's Marcus Malone. See when, he, when Maynard shot that ball, he didn't really shoot it. He kind of threw it up there, a little uh, um, knuckleball action, rather than following through, and it spun out of the rim. He just got to shoot the ball. Kids don't bank the ball anymore. That's what they paid all that money for. Big piece of glass. Use it. Whoa. Jamal Schuler from uh, the outskirts of San Juan as he loaded that up from very deep and they had a fresh 35 second clock. That was from the old town right there. Yeah. Old San Juan, huh? Now Tom Penders uh, wants to talk about it with his ball club. As got about an eight second well, that's the old differential. Use, use it or lose it in the first half. You right. Might as well get, he can't have the whole shot clock, but he can get the shot he wants when he wants it and give VCU very little time to take the last one. I mentioned Tom Penders. Has he uh, seen a tournament or two in his time? Yeah, 34th season as head coach. Here's the itinerary for Houston. And so how do you stay similar, Nate Ross? How do you stay familiar with your surroundings in a different time zone? Well, you wake them up, or you can see today, waking up at 7 o'clock, late breakfast, shoot around at 8, because in their body clocks, this is an 8 o'clock game for them, 8 in the morning. Now, I'm sure they don't practice 8 in the morning because of school. But you can see Wednesday what they're going to do. No naps, full practice, lights out at 11.30. Good luck with that one, Coach. <laughs> with all the games on TV, yeah, yeah. ESPN, family and networks. But he didn't want him to take a nap. It's not jet lag, but it's very close to it to try to get your body clock used to playing when it's 10 a.m. here, of course, but it's 8 a.m. according to the sure. what they've been doing for the last how many years they've been living in Houston. Mm. Smart man to do that, to get him used to it. And consequently, they played very well. They came out ready to roll here, and they got a three-point lead. Yeah, 10 seasons, of course, uh, with the uh, Texas Longhorn program, eight NCAA tournament. Tufts, Columbia, Fordham, Rhode Island, George Washington, and not, now Houston, right? Not his first rodeo, folks. <laughs> yeah, but uh, he knows how, to, how to dance at all those rodeos. And he's done a remarkable job. Wherever he goes, he builds programs back to the top of whatever league they're in, and he's trying to do it right here in Houston. There you see, you got a seven second differential, as I was mentioning, between uh, game uh, clock uh, versus shot clock here. That's where VCU can really turn on the heat, because if Houston's waiting till the last second of the shot clock, they're not going to attack the basket yet. That's exactly what they're going to do. You can take a little gamble here, because they're not going to go. One four look. Ball screen, what else? Play it, play it a century. They switch it. Pretty impressive move. For me Shot clock handle. at four to Nate, and that's going to be a walk on uh, Lanny Smith. Well, Smith uh, wanted to make something happen with that shot clock at four and at three as he started to the bucket. Well, they switched the screen, and you got Firmini on you. I'd take it to the rim, too, but he just took one extra step. Last shot and a half. All right, with five left now, this is Eric Maynard. Jamal Shula didn't happen. Maynard for three. Nope, it would not have counted anyway. As of that will take us to the intermission. Brock Keith Payne with a 12 point explosion on the bench. With my partner, Nate Ross. Hey, a, we said it's a pre Thanksgiving holiday treat for you here, hoop style. Eight terrific college basketball teams from eight of the top conferences around the USA. Three more games right here on ESPNU today. And uh, four more tomorrow, and four more on Sunday, as a matter of fact, that you'll enjoy. All right, let's take a look at uh, some of the numbers from the first half of basketball. At, Let's go to individuals and Brock Keith Payne sensational off the bench doing it in every way imaginable offensively for Tom Pender. Well Brock Keith Payne you can see with the big numbers Jamal Nixon that's 18 points with guys that weren't in the program last year. McKeever five of six six free throws is the only guy for Houston that's gotten to the free throw line. On the other side Michael Anderson started out like crazy ended up with 15 you can see his percentage. Femini five for eight from the line. And then Jamal Schuler will probably contribute more, but the big stat I see is 10 out of 15 from the free throw line for VCU. That's big. Free th uh, field goal percentage is not great. 
bench points are big. We talked about it. Look at Houston, 18-2. to two. They wanted depth. They got depth. And there are two freshmen that are providing the depth. Yeah, that they have. And uh, Tom Penders was telling us yesterday that I'm going to need it. I'm going to need that punch. I'm going to need that oomph off the bench from my freshmen. And uh, in uh, Brock Heath Payne and Zamal Nixon, he certainly got that. But the big story here, again, if you're just joining us, and shame on you, where you been Absolutely. early on this Thursday morning, I say that, uh, Working, of course, maybe? because we care <laughs> about all of you, our college hoop fans. But uh, Anthony Grant's basketball team, fifth in the nation last year at valuing, taking good care of the basketball, only 11 a game. Turned it over one more time than that in the first half. Well, I think that's exactly what he talked about. He said, look, I'm, I'm proud of the defensive effort because they really got after it. We got to take care of the basketball, guys. What we do, we are best at what we do. What we do is take it away from the other team and don't give it up. They gave it up, as you said, 12 times. All right, Brock Keith Payne, because of that uh, outburst in the first half, is going to be on the floor, and he's going to hoist a long-range three to begin this second half of action. So Payne will join uh, Robert McKeever, Marcus Malone, to Farai Tony and Dion Dowell as we check the 10 on the floor. Well, if you're a defensive team like VCU, the defensive possession ends with possession, hopefully after a miss. Offensive rebound by Houston, not what they want to see. They want to get the defensive board and go with it. Houston, a big winner over Moorhead State in their opener while uh, the VCU Rams took care of Maryland Eastern Shore by 19. Now, Brock Heath Payne. See, Eric Maynard just yelled motion. He told everybody else what Houston's going to run. Dowell gave it up and found Brock Heath Payne. It was offline on that triple try. Well, Eric Maynard to run the show for this Anthony Grant-led VCU Rams squad. Notice that uh, Frank Dongo with a basketball is uh, getting the call here to begin the second half. Dongo gave it up inside, but he never fouled Will Femini. Marcus Malone on the steal for Houston. That stuck up in the air, Frank Dongo. They didn't know what to do with it. As you said, try to get it for Femini, but can't leave your feet unless you know where it's going. The team's a little less aggressive to start. Rocky Payne's gotten three shots up here in the first minute and 15 of the second half. Look at that readjustment going high off the glass to get that to fall. Jamal Shuler. The only coaches can appreciate it. Michael Anderson, two defensive boards to get those breaks going. Look at this. McKeever crossed over and went all the way to the bucket. That's not Will Firmini's fault. Somebody's got to stop the basketball before it gets to Will Firmini. He was the last line of defense. But uh, Maynard and company have to get back and stop the ball. You just can't let that happen. Don't you like Robert McKeever's game? He's tough. Got a little bit of everything. He's tough. For, he's very impressive for a freshman. Yeah, get after you defensively. Now Schuler will attack the bucket. That's going to be a blocking foul. That is going to go on uh, Houston's. And the uh, guilty party for the, uh, the Cougars is uh, Tafari Tony, and that's number four on Tony. Good penetration. Can't play defense Matador style. Tony got in. I call him the keeper a freshman before. Excuse me, a senior. That's why he does what he does. Tony got the foul. Wasn't Tony's fault. A little Matador defense on the perimeter. Ooh, that's not good. Fourth foul on Tony with a lot of basketball to play. Well, Tom Penders is uh, ready to uh, sub in for Tafari Tony. Where's Jamal Schuler at the free throw strike? Schuler, a key contributor off the bench. Last year, as you see, uh, Marcus Kuzan, the 6'11 junior out of Baltimore, wears number 50, along with uh, Lanny Smith checking in. The bench uh, doing it one better than the starters on the point side here, here through the first uh, 22 minutes or thereabouts for Houston. That's what Coach Penner's wanted. He wanted depth, and Kuzan just in the ball game gives him a post presence they didn't have last year. He played a couple minutes early. We'll see if he can contribute this one. Well, Jamal Schuler able to split that pair at the line. Ball in the middle and then reverse. Exactly what you have to do to break the press. And in the hands of Robert McKeever. McKeever to squeeze off a long three. Dowell had it momentarily. Schuler took it away from him. Michael Anderson is our rare. Larry Sanders, uh, the 6'9", a freshman, got in. And he took a look at Anderson down on the blocks, but then uh, got fouled as he tried to deliver that jumper. Sanders at the free throw line. Well, it's Sanders or it's Anderson setting that ball screen to free Mainer up, hopefully to go all the way to the rim. But when they double the ball, 
Sanders did it initially in the game, hit the two threes. That time Sanders from the foul line got fouled. They're capable of making the shot, and Maynard's confident in giving him the basketball. Now look at those two bigs, uh, Sanders the freshman, Michael Anderson, even Will Femini, and you know, I, I can't help but thinking, of course, you know, of uh, Joaquin Noah and Al Horford. Oh yeah, he coached that, some good ones. You know, that uh, Anthony Grant was a part of with uh, Billy Donovan's back-to-back -back Florida Gators championship squads. Sanders, 6'9", he's got the arms of a seven-footer. He's got some long arms. That's a great asset when you're a post player. Well, Sanders from the free throw strike to bring VCU back to within one, and there's that pressure in Houston as uh, and to have Deion Dowell go over near that Cougar bench to retrieve that basketball. That pressure almost turned him over. We see a great job in the backcourt. This is Lanny Smith on the crossover. Deion Dowell. Bang! Oh, he could shoot that three. Wide open in the corner, measured it, and stuck it. Good looking out. A lot of pro scouts watching a lot of players. One of them is Deion Dowell. Yeah, I see a lot of the pro scouts here. Uh, Bob Ferry, uh, Danny yep. Ferry's dad from uh, former the general manager of the uh, the Washington Bullets at the time. Bob Ferry here scouting for the Cleveland Cavaliers. This is T.J. Gwynn. And Gwynn uh, got bodied and took a hit on his way to the rack. I want to remind you, college the basketball. Arkansas Razorbacks. What, what a tremendous day. Uh, the college hoop action here out of San Juan. Pelfrey, by the way, Nate, was uh, regaling us with Rick Patino stories yesterday. Ooh, I bet they were good. <laughs> They're my, real my good. My flight should have got in sooner. Uh, Fran Fraschilla, who is uh, also here as a, a color analyst who worked uh, the, the uh, second session today with uh, John Shambi. And uh, we were all just laughing at the stories that Pelfrey was laying out. So Houston by a couple now. As Jamal Nixon gave it up, Dion Dowell has sweet stroke. His second straight three, one out of each corner for Houston. Just going to say he likes the corners. Doesn't matter which one. He stuck him twice. Point guards will find the shooter. Stuck out of bounds. And T.J. Gwynn had the uh, the heel of that size 13 on that sideline. Let's look at Dion Dowell and uh, check out the form for us, Coach Ross. Jamal Nixon right down the middle. Hit him in the left corner. This time the right corner. Bingo. Nothing but the bottom. Point guards love it when they make a nice pass and then you give them the assist. Deion Dowell had a career high 25 against Moorhead State. Right? Jamal Nixon there, the young man from the playgrounds of Brooklyn. That got swallowed up by a trio of ECU Rams on his way to the hoop. Yeah, there was, oh, I can't believe they said he wasn't shooting that ball. He went in there and got hammered twice, double clutched it, knew he was going to get fouled, just kept possession of the basketball. Houston is over the five point lead. Does he stay warm? Kuzan on that uh, that putback jumper off the Deion Dowell miss, and the basketball belongs to the Rams of VCU. Mike, wasn't it amazing? Deion Dowell hits two jumpers, and all of a sudden he's a factor on the offensive boards. You just feel better about yourself when you're making jump shots, and now he's doing his job on the boards as well. Great if you're a Houston Cougar fan. He had 25, which was a career high against Moorhead State. Well, last year, those started 25 games. After transferring to Texas, Jamal Schuler had a good look at the three. And we're going to go the other way inside the 16-minute mark as Michael Anderson of VCU got hit for pushing off. Deion Dowell with a couple of trays has Houston on top by five when we get back to San Juan. ESPNU Coaches Spotlight, Tuesdays at 1, only on ESPNU. Back inside the Calicio de Puerto Rico, we've been so impressed with Anthony Grant, the second-year head coach, who said at VCU, 28 win season a year ago. His philosophies, you play all 94 feet, you play it with great gusto and uh, with a lot of uh, tenacity, and you play up tempo, but you got to have discipline. Now, he's, his vision, he talked about, Nate, is to have VCU be the face of the Colonial Athletic Association. And, you know, furthermore, what's his role? He said, I'm a leader, a teacher, and a mentor. He's getting there, too, and all those factors probably turn into the last 10 minutes beat somebody. Wear them out, make them make a mistake. He never loses his cool because it's a 40-minute basketball game. Deion Dowell again with a look at three. Kuzan on the offensive glass, and he's going to the free throw line. But Deion Dowell has had four looks, to, uh, three from that left corner, and then one that he knocked down from here in the right corner here in the last four possessions, Nate, for Houston. Yeah, made two of them. And that time, Firmini had great position, but Kuzan was just so big that he timed it perfectly, went up and got it, and then got fouled. 
Speaking of getting fouled, you can see from this great shot, the two, Firmini and the two guys from VCU do not occupy that bottom space on the free throw lane. And that's a new rule change this year. You can see it right there. The rationale behind it is the players will be further away from the basket during a free throw, and they won't get shoved under the basket. Rough post play is a point of emphasis, and this will take it away from them. Yes, they are in the right spots. They're not wrong, but it's a change in the rules this year. Well, Deion Dow, though, uh, snuck in from that second spot on uh, now the elongated blocks. A lot more and, room under yeah, there. Yeah, was able to. So, but uh, you know what? I think it's going to help the offensive rebounds. Oh, there's that, a great. That, don't you think so? There's great strategy involved. We yeah. used to have set plays, either spin or cross, and take advantage of that. Uh -huh. And I learned it from the European League where they have that uh, quadrilateral, I think it's called. Trapezoid. Trapezoid, trapezoid lane. lane, yes. I took geometry, so I learned. <laughs> but um, it's a I great advantage. It's a great advantage to have some kind of play obviously people will make free throws as much as they should. Now VCU has turned it over as T.J. Gwynn wasn't able to find Larry Sanders. And that step back quick jumper from Zamal Nixon there and uh, then Tom Pender saying wait a minute a little bit too early there yeah. for me. Great turnover to get it now turn it into points not a quick shot that's not what they want. So Houston by five as we're inside the 15 minute mark Larry Sanders was being held by Marcus Kuzan. Well, Larry Sanders, such an intriguing young athlete. Where's number one? 6'9", freshman from Fort Pierce, Florida. And the two exhibition games and the uh, the win over uh, Maryland Eastern Shore with eight rejections, eight block shots. Long arms doesn't foul people. He's been very productive. You can see VCU in the first half, great at the line. I'm sure coach talked about, let's get back to the line. Make them pay. Eric Maynard. Going to be off mark on that three-point attempt. Floated on that one. Kamini with the board. Great effort. Gwyn to load it up and fill it up. He's tripled for VCU. Gwyn was screaming and yelling because he was wide open. That's the pass that's open, the diagonal pass. And Gwyn made him pay with a big three. And they're not going to stop pressing. So here comes a run for VCU if they can score. They're, they're pressing. They're playing good D. Now they're going to turn into points. You hear the, uh, the VCU partisans extolling their ball club. It's caught a press breaker. <laughs> a guy like Nixon just flies up the floor. Yeah, but they look at the senior, Robert McKeever. Oh, yeah. wait, 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 wait a minute. Give me the basketball and let's restore order here. Uh, as Nixon. Lanny Smith got fouled as he was trying to slash his way through the paint. Uh, Nixon took the quick shot last time. McKeever said, all right, son, I'll run the show. You break the press, give me the basketball. There's Joey Rodriguez, the VCU freshman, uh, also from the state of Florida. As we mentioned, seven recruits from the Sunshine State. As Eric Maynard is going to get arrested. Nixon and Rodriguez should be a great matchup, freshman on freshman. Robert McKeever will bottom out that three-point hit. A lot of coaches went out of bounds plays to get it in bounds. Coach Penners went to score out of bounds. McKeever did it right there. Houston back on top by five. T.J. Gwynn put it on the deck. How about the pretty delivery on that finger roll after he ball faked on the three? Great move. He hit the three last time. Everybody in the building thought he was going to take another one, faked it, took it right to the rim. Now Schuler applying pressure with Gwynn. Houston will beat it. Nixon with a left hand. Kuzan didn't get the putback to stay down. A couple of point black opportunities uh, go a glimmer for Houston. It's tough for Rodriguez saving on the other team's basket and got away with it. And VCU can maybe get back to one or tie it up with a three point hit on this trip as we approach the 13 minute mark in San Juan. Terrific one going on here in the first round of the O'Reilly Auto Parts Puerto Rico tip off. Lance Kerr stuff. Uh, <laughs> fill it to bring VCU back to within one. They're calling the press off. Don't bet on that one. It's not going to happen. And a kick ball reset on the clock. No, well, Houston sensing that uh, Tom Pender is sensing this run is uh, going to uh, get Brock Keith Payne back in. Payne uh, wears number 32, and uh, he will replace his uh, fellow freshman, uh, Zamal Nixon. Who takes a seat there's Rocky Payne with his 12 first half points and because of the style you figure teams are going to get tired they play so many bodies there is no sign of fatigue on either one of these teams both in great condition they have to be to play this style they're going to go all the way to the final buzzer just like this 94 feet. Well, Jamal Schuler will uh, sit down 
And uh, back on the floor for VCU is uh, Ed Nixon, another freshman, 6'8", and he's on the basketball now. So they've got 6'8", now, guarding the point, checking the point, yeah. Robert McKeever. Rocky Payne. Payne and living, and how did that uh, teardrop of his go down? He's smiling a little bit. He knew he got away with one there. He thought he was just going to get the foul call. No foul, but he made the bucket. That soft teardrop jumper. Barging his way into the paint was Frank Dongo. And uh, he got the blocking foul from Marcus Kuzan of Houston, his fourth. Yeah, Dongo got away with this one. Kuzan did move on him, but he just was out of control going to the rim. Luckily for him, Kuzan slid underneath him. He's going to go to the line for two. But we said VCU attacks the basket more. VCU goes to the line more. VCU hopefully will make him pay off and score points. Not that one, make him score points on the line. So the young man from uh, Cameroon, the six foot seven inch sophomore, Frank Dongo. And number four on Marcus Kuzan. So Kuzan's over there with uh, Tafari Tony, who also has four. And of course, VCU wants to press. Dongo makes the free throw. It's much easier to get into it. Split the come. pair did uh, Dongo as Houston's lead is two. Dion Dowell, boy, attacking the bucket. Dowell didn't finish. There's a press that paid off in a quick shot. Fortunately for you, VCU, Houston misses. Now you got to make it into points. Well, Joey Rodriguez, freshman being hounded by Rocky Payne. Couple of, couple of youngsters in their programs. Two frosh going after each other. Both teams, tremendous pressure on the basketball. And doesn't, they don't get beat on the ball off, and that's a sign of great defense. Shot clock at seven now. Joey Rodriguez has to hoist the long range three that's right there. Shot clock running out. Rodriguez said no problem, and now he gets hit with a blocking foul as Lanny Smith was pushing it right back at him. And that Joey Rodriguez three here inside the 12 minute mark in the second half has put Anthony Grant in his ball club. We're down by five. Back on top by one should be uh, a most interesting. Final run down the stretch here, and that is going to be a pushing foul that is going to go on a VCU's Ed Nixon, 6'3 freshman out of St. Petersburg. They cleared it out for Malone on the inbounds pass. Great spacing. Everybody out of the way. Malone tried to penetrate a foul, or excuse me, a keeper. Uh, three and five, look to see him getting old. Yeah, that's the difference. No, good, you're still a young fella. The Kiever tried to penetrate on the great clear out and got bumped going to the foul line. We talked about VCU going to the foul line a lot. Now Houston, obviously, in the one and one's going to Well, foul. yeah, Nate, that's that's team foul number seven, right? So yep. we're talking one in bonus at ten. It'll be the uh, the two shot variety for uh, for Houston. And we're in the last quarter, last half of the last half, so it's going to pay dividends for either team. Only five fouls against Houston, so they got a couple more to give before PCU goes to the line. A good look at uh, the cool and collective senior out of New Haven, Connecticut, Robert McKeever. Hit nine threes last year against Prairie View that uh, set a new school mark at the University of Houston. Four times over the 30-point yeah. plateau. This young man could just flat out play the game for Tom Penders. You don't want to do anything to get him more confident. A couple of free throws might even make him believe I can drill threes because he can light it up on that scoreboard. A pair from the line put in the books for Robert McKeever. And Eric Maynard just got hit with a carry. Tom Penders clenched his fist above his head, and he's been uh, he's been bargaining for that one all yep. morning long. Well, they put a little bit of heat on Maynard that time. Didn't trap him, just kind of forced him to the sideline. And he turned it over in a little hesitation. Well, Houston by one and with the basketball. That's yeah, great breaking the press. Cole never hit the floor to look on the front court. Rocky Payne again with such superior strength in the delivery around the rim. So good with that left hand. Dongo got rejected. Dongo was sent down by Dion Dowell, but he Dowell got a piece of the body and Dongo is going to the free throw line. Dowell gets him with the with the body, obviously, and then gets the hand, too. Didn't hit the hand when he fouled him. and got him with the body. It's a good call. Hey, uh, 
It's the first game I've done this year, and I said good call by a referee already, so I'm doing good. Free throw, press, here it comes. Well, Frank Dongo uh, calmly at the free throw stripe. A uh, couple of hits. Bring VCU back to within one. That's what you want. That's the pass you wanted for VCU. Dongo almost got a hand on it. Rocky Payne ran it down. Well, Payne with his 14-point effort off the bench. Now will step back and try to triple. It's a pretty quick shot in the shot clock. At VCU, their pressure wears on you. You just want to get rid of the basketball because you don't want to deal with their defense after a while, and that's exactly what Coach Grant wants. And they've settled down after turning it over very yep. uncharacteristically 12 times in the first half. Dongo going to come up very short on that three-point effort. And now around the rim, Will Femini was uh, banging around with Houston's Marcus Malone, and that is going to be on... Femini. Well, he, I thought he called it on Malone, but you're right, he called it Femini. on Femini. Walking to the other end to shoot him. Malone had great position on a much bigger player than Will Femini. Femini must have shoved him or hit him or did something as they went up in the air because uh, normally it's from the guy from behind. But, uh, excuse me, the, yeah, the guy from behind, but that time it was Femini. Well, Marcus Malone to the free throw stripe, 6'5", senior out of Compton, California. Great position, Femini. Ooh, I don't know about that one. It looked like Malone had his arm around from the well, The uh, complimentary player that digs in on the defensive end, Marcus Malone, not able to earn that bonus. Or even. I said good call last time. That time I questioned it. So we go. What a screen by Anderson. Maynard gave it up as he was trying to operate in the paint. Now this is Jamal Schuler. Very patient on offense. They got the total package, BCU doesn't. They got a score right there. The floater from Maynard wouldn't fall for him. The basketball remains with BCU. Jamal Nixon, freshman from Brooklyn, checking back in to replace Lanny Smith for Tom Pender's club. Well, Nixon did a lot of good things when he was in there. I'm sure Coach Penders wants to give him another shot here. Long way to go in this one. The guard Maynard, that's a tough draw for you. First games we said he was sick and didn't play in the first game for Houston. Maynard handling. Oh, what, a what a screen was set by Dongo. And look at Marcus Malone. He swatted away Eric Maynard. Maynard. And the basketball remains with VCU. Maynard was uh, saying, wait a minute, I should be at the line. Maynard wants a call. That was not a foul. Women's College Hoop on ESPNU tonight continues. Doubleheader. Duke Blue Devils at 7 Eastern take on the Bulls of South Florida. Then at 9 o'clock, check out Candace Parker. Pat Summit's Tennessee Lady Vols against Courtney Paris and the Oklahoma Sooners. ESPNU Women's Basketball Invitational tonight. If you'd like more info, log on the web at ESPNU.com. Watch Maynard here on the down screen. Here he comes. They wanted to uh, find on that entry pass Michael Anderson down on the blocks. Brock Keith Payne giving up about five, six inches trying to deal with Michael Anderson on the hole. Yeah, Anderson had the, the duck in move there. They had him coming there and they had Maynard coming off a down screen. As you said, they went to Anderson. Here we go. VCU back at the free throw line. It does so many good things for their program. Obviously, they can score points, but then they can set up their press. Last two times, Houston has not turned it over, but they made some questionable passes and got away with them. I'm telling you, it just wears you out to play against this kind of defense for 40 minutes. And that's exactly what Coach Grant wants. When you think about the potential meat grinder that the Colonial Athletic uh, Association could be. George Mason, Jim Laranega's uh, Patriots picked to, uh, in the preseason poll to be number one. Anthony Grant, VCU number two. And, and Corey, Old Dominion, UNC, Wilmington, Hofstra, Hofstra Drexel. Tough game. Drexel. Tough, tough conference. Great out of conference wins last year. Didn't get in the tournament revenge factor yeah. for Drexel this year. Loser Flint in the game. It's a great league. Yep. We love it. Oh, yeah. And last year during Bracket Busters, what we, uh, we saw Old Dome. Going to Toledo and uh, beat Stan Joplin's club, who went 14 and two and won the Mid-American. Marcus Malone off that ball fake, and he got swatted away by T.J. Gwynn. Well, VCU trying to reclaim the lead as Raul even what at a 50. Pass. What a beautiful look from Eric Maynard at Jamal Schuler. Maynard saw him. Schuler cut to the basket. Nobody guarded him. Nobody guarded you. Get to the rim. That's exactly what he did. Great pass from Maynard. Two for Schuler. Now, that's why he's a wooden candidate, Absolutely. a Bob Cousy candidate as the top point guard in the country. Dion Dow 
At three, crawled across the rim, and Maynard will board it for the Rams of VCU. Not a bad rebounder either. Schuler to trigger the three and bury it. Schuler makes the great cut for the layup, and he hits the three. VCU's on a run. The Rams of Virginia Commonwealth spearheaded by the talented backcourt of Eric Maynard and Jamal Schuler up by five. Homeowners, want to refinance and get cash? Countrywide has a great reason to do it now, a no-cost refi. It has no points, no credit reporting fee, no processing fee, no document fee, and no third-party fees. No title or escrow fees. Absolutely no closing costs. So you wind up with a lot more cash. Call now and ask for a no-cost refi. We're America's number one home loan lender, and no one can do Back at San Juan, we'll show you why that uh, one of the most decorated lead guards in the country has received that kind of acclaim, Eric Maynard. Great caption there. You set screens to set Maynard up to do something with the ball. Schuler burns Nixon on the corner there, and Maynard finds it for an easy two, and then Schuler hits the three right after that. A run for DCU, and guess what, Michael? Here comes the press. Surprise, surprise, Eric Maynard of VCU single season mark with those helpers of his, 224 of them last year, six of them today. We told you he'd be special starting. Doesn't have to necessarily put a lot of points on the board as there's that pressure now from uh, Jamal Schuler. Now here's tough, tough place to throw the ball in bounds in the corner. Just bad angle to throw, great angle to play defensively. We approach the eight and a half minute mark with the VCU on top by five after this run spearheaded by Eric Maynard and Jamal Schuler. They throw so many different kind of presses at you. You just have to be ready to go. Marcus Malone got in trouble. Uh, Tom Pender's ball club. Trying to talk about things, trying to settle it down a little bit. Had a couple of quick shots on the offensive end of uh, Brock Heath Payne and, uh, and uh, Marcus Malone to quick ones in the early offense. You know, you're putting the ball in the freshman's hands, but the keeper's going to get it and calm things down. This is Brocky Payne. Forced it up on the glass. Got it to drop with a foul. He's just so strong in the upper body. Can take hits and still finish in the paint. That's a freshman, ladies and gentlemen. Watch this move down the middle. He gets hammered here. We've seen him do it left-handed. There's the pass from McKeever. He comes down the middle, gets hammered, throws it up with the right hand. When you hear the whistle, kids, throw it up on the rim. You got a body like that, it's going in, there's a chance for three. Rocky Payne now with 19. Nate, I'm convinced Big. he's looking for contact oh, on delivery, isn't he? Absolutely looking for it, because he knows he can get the shot up. Whether it goes in or not, it's one thing. Foul on the other team, and more times than not, it goes in. Great pass. Dongo, the pretty look to Michael Anderson, who'll crush that. As Houston Jeterior D broken down there. Well, you took the words right out of my mouth. Houston scoring. You don't have to stop somebody at the other end. You can't trade baskets when you're down. That's 18 now for Michael Anderson, who got off to the quick start. Nixon's triple never got to the rim, but we've got a push underneath. And we're going the other way as that foul is going to go on Brock Keith Payne. Michael Red Guy with Nate Ross and, of course, Anthony Grant's ball club up by four. And oh, the, hey, they, they've got a better handle on things in the second half, haven't they, as far as valuing the basketball? Absolutely. Not turning it over. And, yes, they are playing as a team with the 11 assists. So I'm sure that Mr. Green had a little talk with them at halftime, and they listened. Coaches tend to do that? Yes, they do. Now, did you uh, paint some, uh, rather peel some paint off locker room walls no, in your day? No, Michael, never. Calm, never. composed, Yeah, right. That's why, I, that's why I have no hair left. <laughs> Because I was calm <laughs> at halftime. Well, that's why Nate is one of the uh, the top caddies on the uh, the golf circuit. Summertime, uh, no summertime's hoops. your time, no hoops, huh? I thought you were an AAU guy. Why don't you be an AAU guy? You and me. Well, let's do we'll it. We'll go to an AAU, get an AAU club somewhere, huh? Why not? Why not? Travel around the world now, the AAU does. There you go. VCU now by six. See what Robert McKeever has offensively with Houston. He and Deion Dowell. Houston looks a little out of sorts. It's just, I'm telling you, it's dealing with that pressure every single time. Deion Dowell in all kinds of traffic got rejected by Michael Anderson. Everybody stood around and watched Dowell on offense, and now the freshman Nixon commits a foul. But they're standing around on offense at the other end, especially after a timeout. You know that's what Coach Penders did not talk about. He talked about movement make them play more defense they're not they're playing defense but Houston can't attack it properly 
Now, speaking of Tom Penders, of course, one of the finest point guards ever in the state of Connecticut. You know, when he was a high school basketball standout, he wanted to go play for Providence. And their legendary uh, head coach uh, at the time, uh, Joe... Uh, Lapchick? No, 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 that was no Mulaney. Mulaney, right. Yeah, Joe Mulaney at uh, Providence. And Johnny Egan, who played point guard for Providence, was uh, his hero and who he wanted to emulate. And uh, later on, while being a head coach on the college level, John Egan, now part of uh, Tom Pender's uh, life as a basketball coach. The two of them got together. He told them a story about, I wanted to be you as a college basketball player. See, too much one-on-one -on -one for Houston right there. They got, you got to make VCU play defense. I know you don't want to play against it, but you got to make them play a little bit. Take a quick one-on-one -on -one shot. You're just playing right into their hands. And spinning into the paint uh, was Lanny Smith. And uh, Smith... Great combination. He's got a point guard who looks up and trusts his teammates. Maynard got all the way uh, to the dotted line there and didn't get that to go. And that's going to be a walk now on Rocky Payne. Uh, great effort for the board. And then you just walked with it. And VCU gets it right back. VCU needs to pound it inside now in a half court situation and get Houston in more foul trouble than they are. Now Schuler gave it up. This is T.J. Gwynn. And Gwynn got hit with a walk. Lost his footing, but that was Brock Keith Payne was up and into him defensively. Well, that's the logo part of the floor. That big basketball is a logo on the floor. You're not standing on the wood. You're standing on whatever that big logo is. Big sticker, basically, on the floor. A little bit of moisture on that, and his feet just came out from under. Now we approach the six-and-a-half-minute mark left. Great to have you with us in this first-round encounter between Houston and Virginia Commonwealth. Michael Regai alongside Nate Ross here in San Juan. Well, high school player, you don't like to play defense. I don't think the people of ECU are going to recruit you. <laughs> not of Anthony Grant's the head coach. Absolutely not. Oh, Look at this. Nixon off the spin and one. He took contact. It'll go to the free-throw line. And we were telling you about the acrobatic abilities of both Zamal Nixon and Rocky Payne today. If this isn't a playground move, a la Kenny Anderson, there isn't one. Spin up and underscore and get fouled. That's what New York City's all about. That's what the big cities all over the country are all about. But that young man played in New York City and played it very well. I know. Yeah, your guy Kremens, I understand. Kenny of Anderson, course. Stephon Marbury, both of them from around Brooklyn, the Coney Island sector. When I was Coach Kremens assistant Appalachian, we had a couple great players from the New York area as well. Bobby's going to get it from there. Michael Anderson just got hit for setting an illegal screen near the timeline. Set it, but you can't move, Michael. He kind of slid his hip into it. Referee all over it. It's interesting. They never call that during the game. They call it in the last five minutes of the game, six minutes of the game. Well, coaches on a practice floor, I mean, uh, you know, when you're when you're running your offense and, and coming across, will, will you say that? Will you look at oh, a player and say, wait a minute, that's illegal. That's illegal. We're not going to get away with that in the absolutely. game. Absolutely. I mean, and it's a foul that killed momentum right there. BCU had the ball back. You just can't do that, especially that far from the basket. There's no point. It's just a foolish mistake. Rocky Payne got shut off there by Gwynn. But Payne will continue to attack the bucket. And Payne is uh, going to take contact there and get to the free throw line. One referee wanted to call a walk because by rule, when you go to the floor, it's a walk. Hey. We are college sports. And Rocky Payne is one of the uh, finest high school offensive talents ever to come out of the state of Texas. Most memorable moment, Dallas Carter High School, when I dropped 58 in a tournament game <laughs> to set the uh, Dallas Carter high. Against high school kids, he's a man playing with yeah. the boys. I mean, he's just so big and so strong. What a bad play. 58 numbers on one in one game. Dallas Carter, one of the uh, very strong uh, high school programs in the uh, Dallas area, state of Texas. Rocky Payne's got Houston back to within one. Freshman on freshman. Coach Grant C and his point guard, freshman Rodriguez in trouble, says, all right, let's stop it. Got a little help. Uh, Joey Rodriguez uh, getting a little help, indeed, from head coach Anthony Grant. Well, Anthony Grant. Uh, Look at the coolness over there. I mean, this is a very close basketball game, a one-point game, and you don't see him jumping around excited. That's the way he runs his whole program. Cool, calm, collected, and get after it on defense. Now Virginia Commonwealth, their one-point advantage, and Anthony Grant 
course, uh, knowing he's got to back up a 28 win season and a trip two games deep into the NCAA tournament from a year ago. For Tom Penders, 34 years of collegiate coaching, he knows all about the meat grinder of this game. But just to uh, finish off that Providence College story where we wanted to go, right. he finally contacted uh, Joe Mullaney and said, You know, I, I want to be your point guard. And he said, Coach Mullaney said, uh, Coach Penders, or Tom Penders, you know, we think you can play a little bit, but we recruited this point guard out of West Roxbury by the name of Jimmy Walker, and we think he's a little bit better than you. Just a little. Just <laughs> and Tom was telling us that yesterday. He got a uh, great kick out of hearing that. Of course, we, Jimmy Walker, the late Jimmy Walker, who passed away uh, a month or so ago. Father of the Jalen Rose and uh, one of the, the finest lead guys. I thought he was way before his time ever to come along yep. out of that Providence program and into the NBA. You can see VCU right there out of timeout with a distinct scoring play to the man who's been the hot hand in second half, Jamal Schuler. Did not score, but goes to the line. And Jamal Schuler has had a, a very nice second half. Now we'll look to split the pair from the free throw line. You'd love to see a kid like this, too. Last year was not a starter, played a major role, and this year comes into the season knowing he's going to be the man, and as a senior, is ex is doing exactly what he has been prepared to do. He's playing very well. Well, Nate, how about the way he stuffed the stat sheet in that big win over Duke? 14 points, four boards, uh, three assists. You know, as you said, off the bench, and he followed that up in the loss to Pitt with 12 more and three rebounds. So he had a terrific two-game tournament. That was icing on it. That's good call. Yeah, they got him with the left hand. Good call. Well, there's where some of that strength and muscle uh, go to the detriment of Rocky Payne as he chats with Tom Penders about it. Watch Payne. He dribbles. Watch the left hand. <laughs> Eric Maynard's not a little person. That's a strong young man for Payne there to just shove Eric Maynard and knock him out of the way. Good call, referees all over it. BCU gets it back. They turned Houston over. I'm telling you, that defense it just wears you out. You just get sick of playing it. Watch this. Big old screen by the media. A Mainer will attack the bucket. Dion Dow got a piece of that on the rejection. And now Will Femini is held by Zamal Nixon of Houston. And it'll be Femini with a free throw strike. Uh, dare we say that with both ball clubs uh, in the double bonus, that we're, we're, who shoots free throws better coming down the stretch, Nate That's Ross? It's going to be early in the season. Obviously, you practice it a lot. What Coach Penders might have to do is part, put Marcus Kuzan back in the game because for me, he's just being a big-time factor on the boards, offensive boards more than defensive boards. Um, and Kuzan might be able to keep him off the glass. We'll see if he goes back with him here. Still plenty of time here. Five, five thirteens in eternity in basketball game. I'm going to forecast on you about four months down the road. Come NCAA tournament time, I think we're going to see both these ball oh, no clubs there and representing their respective conferences. No question. I'm going glass with that soft jumper for Houston is Lanny Smith, the senior out of Missouri City, Texas. I got a term for you too. That time of year, these freshmen will be frostmores. They won't be <laughs> Fros freshmen there you anymore. Go. They'll be experienced with a lot of games under their belt and ready to get into that tournament. Jamal Schuler, that soft jumper, and he got the friendly roll, the iron kind here in Puerto Rico as VCU back on top by a deuce. Yeah, as a sophomore, a junior, he, he commits a charge there, but the senior pulls up. People don't do this anymore. Shoots a little late footer. Great move by the senior. Smith thought about it. Jamal Schuler got in his shirt. They just switch every screen because it's all the same player on the outside athletically. Andy Smith a little bit shy on that three-point opportunity. Basketball is going to stay with Houston. And we're going to show our age here, Michael. All Houston's doing is running a little weave. Be careful. On the outside. Be careful now. Be careful. It's just a number. They're running a little. <laughs> they're running a little weave on the outside. And defensively, all is doing is switching because nobody's penetrating. They're just moving the basketball, which they need to do. But defensively, VCU's almost, it looks like they're in a zone. Let's see if they do it again here. If they just run a little lead, the top three guys don't move. Nixon from very deep. Got back rim on that three-point bomb. It's great if it goes, but it's a little early in the shot clock, and it's such a close game, only a two-point game. And Nixon had too much body on Eric Maynard as he was initiating offense, and Maynard's going to the free-throw line. 
tonight. Everybody take a deep breath in this two-point VCU lead. Come, Come on, on back with us. Together for you, our producer, Howard Miller, director Skip Hill, Mike Simons, our man in the tape room, heading things up there. Great job. Great job by all of our, uh, our gang. And, uh, of course, Anthony Grant, he's uh, that, that, that look, that locked-in look as he matches X's and O's with the gentleman in his 34th season as a head coach with 584 wins in his pocket as a collegiate coach Tom Penders free throw line though Nate Ross it has uh, been used to the tremendous benefit of Eric Maynard and uh, the rest of his VCU Rams yeah that's a 30 this will be the 36th attempt they've made 22 Houston's only attempted 17, made 12 of them, but only attempted 17. We said VCU's pounding inside so far, so good. Now, Maynard sticks a couple from the line. He's only one of 11 for the floor, but it hasn't detoured his uh, his overall uh, excellence, both uh, either running the offense or at the uh, defensive end. And Jamal Shuler's really helped him, too. It's, he's got six assists. Shuler at the, the end of the, a lot of those. Great but steal. Yeah, McKeever got stripped and ripped away as Houston's turned it over down by four as we approach three and a half left. That's a great player. He's not shooting well. He's just getting the assist. He's playing great D. He gets a strip right there. And he makes the free throws. Joey Rodriguez on the floor with Eric Maynard. Schuler on the take. Jamal Schuler with a leaner that's perfect. See, again, he pulls up and shoots it rather than knocking somebody down and committing a charge. That's smart basketball. That's a senior. Lanny Smith, oh, did Houston need that as he sweet strokes that long range three? That is a bit, that doesn't go in. This game might be over. That's a great, great shot. Lanny Smith comes down. Maynard backs off a little bit. Smith says, don't back off me. I'm going to hurt you. Five senior starters. Maynard turned the corner and got rejected. He slipped again a little bit. Yeah, Deion Dowell, though, just uh, took it right off the hands of Eric Maynard. So Big. Houston get back within one, maybe tie on this trip. Huge possession for Houston right here. Switch everything. They just got to get him on a pick and roll if they're going to switch like that. Smith off the spin. Lanny Smith and one. What a beautiful delivery around the rack. Michael Anderson just stood there, but he did bump him, and Smith made him pay. Chance to tie this thing up. Watch the little spin move once again, Michael. In the lane, no help side. You're on an island all by yourself, Mr. Anderson. You get bumped there, Smith scores. Chance for three. Take him into the lane, spin back on him. Take it into the defender. Get the call, get the bucket. Chance for three again. Great play by number 23 right there. At 66-60, Lanny Smith, who had been very quiet, there you see uh, Smith, the uh, 1,000-point, 375 assist club, but very quiet. He calmly uh, knocks out the three, and now the end one. He's got a chance for six straight to tie it up, and he has done that. Lanny Smith taking charge inside the final three minutes for Houston. Basketball's a game of runs, and Schuler had his run. Smith's got his run, and he's still got two and a half to play. Now Eric Maynard will turn the corner, and he's going to the free throw line. Deion Dowell trying to plead his case. He said, I got all rock there. He did, but he probably got him with the body. I'm sure we'll get a better view than that, but it's rare the referee will say, you know, son, you're right. I'll change my mind. They just don't do that. You got the call, Deion, against you. And once again, we talked about Maynard. Not a good day from the field. Yeah, he got him with the body. He did get the ball. But Maynard's doing it on the foul line. He's doing it with assists. And he's stripped at the other end. There's another big time free throw. That's maturity right there. He's perfect from that free throw stripe, even though, as we said, just one of 11 from the floor is Eric Maynard today. Now, Deion Dowell has picked up his fourth personal foul. And uh, he's joining uh, Tafari Tony, who uh, picked up four early. Penner's going to keep him in there, too. Not a bad move. I mean, there's not a lot of time left. You got a lot of depth on that bench. Go with the guys that got you here, and we'll see what happens if he fouls out. But a senior late in starting five. Right. You, know, you go with Deion Dowell and uh, Tony and McKeever, Marcus Malone, and Lanny Smith. Start five seniors to stop that. Got you. That's a lot of first time all day. BCU's pulled off the press. Very unusual. Eric Maynard with a couple of more free throw hits. Four for four at the line in the late going. Lanny Smith is feeling it. Lanny Smith going to the reverse that goes. Well, they got the switch, and they had Dongo guarding him, and Smith figured, I can take you, Frank, and he took him right to the rack. Eight straight points now for Lanny Smith. Deep three, conventional three-point play. Now going baseline. Grant might have to change the defense and not switch every screen. 
Tied at 68 apiece. As advertised, we thought so, and this is exactly what we've got it. Jamal Schuler, what a board. tough jumper that's swallowed up by Deion Dowell. Now let's see if VCU switches it all and if Dongo ends up on a guard again like last time Smith burned him. Here's the, here it is. Yep, they switched it. Eric Maynard wants to switch it back, but he can't. Here he goes. Lanny Smith wheeling in the paint. Oh, what a pass. Nixon is going to the free throw line with a chance to put Houston on top. But well, Lanny Smith, a complimentary player for about the first 36 minutes and just has exploded here. Nate. Free throw line. So the, the, the non or the switches by VCU is burning him defensively because they got big people. Excuse me, I don't say that. They have post people on guards and it's hurting them. I don't like that big. And let's see how freshman Zabal Nixon has learned his lessons at the free throw line. He played for Ruth Lovelace, right? As a senior His player. high school coach. He played for uh, a female, a woman, who was a coach of it. Yeah, it's terrific. In the Bronx, that's a tough lady, I am uh, sure. I bet you. I would love, I think I'm going to try to get a hold of Coach Lovelace. That would be a wonderful conversation first, that we could have. First uh, time all half Houston's in front. Yeah, as Zamal Nixon calmly at the free throw line cashing in twice to put Houston cheer to bring that one your way as well since mid-october you're walking all working all these drills and I'm sure coach Penner just told guys one stop and the game is in our hands Let's see if they can get it Eric Maynard just one for 11 from the floor but doing it uh, with his four generalship from the strike Maynard on the crossover didn't finish stay with VCU that's confidence coach Grant I got it's one for 11 tells him one four flat you take it to the basket well, Anthony Grant diagramming things now take a look at this game reset timeouts VCU with three used to with two hanging in the air going glass Jamal Schuler plus one on the Houston foul it's big for a couple reasons Michael obviously it's a three-point opportunity but it fouls Dowell out of the game on the elbow, shot fake, and right to the rack. Double clutch, Dow gets him. Bingo, he scores chance for three. And Dow's out. That's big for both ways. That's big. Number five on the senior, Deion Dowell, the uh, transfer from Texas. Uh, very strong this morning. And his efforts in this uh, first round game, Dowell uh, with 11 points, with the three trays as he will uh, foul out with those 11. So Tom Penders is going to turn uh, to Safari Tony, who picked up his fourth. And Nate, he's been sitting there a long, right. long time. Well, he, he rode Deion Dow right there. Obviously a disappointed young man as far as he could take and fouled out. Now the question is, does Anthony Grant go after Tafari Tony and get him out? Now you got to go to a guy that hasn't played in the post. Jamal Schuler trying to put VCU back on top, and he will do that perfectly from the line. Interesting, no press. They're in a zone. First time today, VCU in a 2-3 zone. And with Joey Rodriguez staying on the floor, playing with Eric Maynard in the backcourt. Small in the backcourt, but really quick. Interesting, Houston, as I'm sure they prepared for it, now they have to readjust their whole offense. Look how quick they are. It's not a stand around zone like in high school. They're getting after you. Shot clock at 10 for Lanny Smith. Smith crossed over and left it short. VCU with a basketball in by one. Now, there's a four-second differential between game and shot clock. Even if it plays out, Houston will get it back. One-point game, he's got to play deep. They're going to run it down to the end. Oh, he just lost his shoe. And Anthony Grant's got to get a timeout. Yep, uh, blew it, blowing the tire is Joey Rodriguez, huh? The freshman from Florida. We talk about driving like a NASCAR driver. And a little <laughs> quick 12-second pit stop, Joey. Put that shoe back on. The little one, the diminutive five foot nine, uh, true point guard. It's a beautiful city, but be prepared to drive like a maniac when you get down here because that's yep. the way it is on the roads. And thank goodness you did it. I didn't. I heard it's worse at rush hour. I didn't hit the rush hour. I went, yeah, after practices here yesterday, uh, <laughs> look at the Atlantic Ocean right outside. I went back uh, during rush hour, and it was a task. I'll tell you, as we reset it now, VCU by one. Both have a pair of timeouts left. We've been in the double bonus for quite some time, and the possession arrow belongs to Houston. Four-second differential, almost five-second differential on the clock. 
Five seconds, long time, but you better know what you're gonna do. A trap, a deflection by Houston. Anything messes up the opportunity offensively. All right, Anthony Grant sends out Jamal Schuler, Will Femini, TJ Gwynn, Joey Rodriguez, and Eric Maynard. Basketball in the hands of the floor general. I don't think he a long way to go here. Now Maynard being double teamed by Tony and Smith. Shot clock at seven. Rodriguez triple teamed and got held, got held with five on the shot clock and nine left in the game. Well, you know, that's really smart, I think, by Rodriguez. He could have jacked up a three, makes it, it's great, misses it, he might cost his team the game. He kept possession, got fouled, going to the line. All right. Went after this one. I love it. And great time here. from Virginia Commonwealth made the trek here to the, uh, the islands, San Juan. And the young man looking real cool. He's smiling, huh? Say, give me the basketball. Lanny, Lanny Smith. Step to the line. Lanny Smith for Houston just said something to him. And Mr. Rodriguez just looked at him and laughed. Like you said, Mr. Cool at the line. I'm sure the senior, Lanny Smith, had a little comment for him. Like, freshmen aren't supposed to make free throws in this situation. I'm sure Mr. Rodriguez has made big time shots in high school. And here's his chance to add to it in college. Gamesmanship. Absolutely. For Lanny you know, how mentally tough are you? I'm gonna talk to you and have a little laugh. Share a little fun before you go to the line, freshman. Maybe Lanny said, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. Joey Rodriguez with the one in bonus. Pretty pure on the first. Yep. Put a smack on the head from Eric Maynard. Now, the worst possible thing he makes this is do not foul. This to put VCU up three. I think they press passively. Oh, smart call. Coach Grant calls timeout to set up his dig. Dead center perfect twice for yep. true freshman Joey Rodriguez. Though so that that's why hey, that's evolved about a head coach knowing your personnel and knowing that he's had this young true freshman on the floor with Eric Maynard for the last seven minutes of the second half. And, Call and the head coach was rewarded by his his presence. I just think it was a great move if we go back to Rodriguez when he caught the ball in the corner. He could have jacked it, but he realized we got time on the shot clock. He realized he can control the basketball as a point guard, and he got fouled and went to the line. That's a big point, whether it's a turning point, we don't know, in this basketball game. Now, Robert McKeever, Zamal Nixon, Van Bell fouled out, though. Need a triple to tie it. Five seconds left. McKeever loaded it up and he got held before he did. And uh, so there's the coaching strategy of Anthony Grant to foul and send McKeever to the free throw strike with a three point lead. This is a copycat game. Everything changed. Last year, no coaches would foul in this situation. This year, I've seen three games already. Two of them, they do it because the odds of him making, missing, getting a rebound, and scoring are against them. McKeever's got to hit the first. He did that. So now, with 2.4 left, Tom Penders to call timeout, down by two. And now here is where we so we showed you how things have been backed up on the blocks. Absolutely. On the lane, we're chase it and throw it up to the rim. He's got to miss it though. Well, the senior, Robert McKeever. He hit the second one, and he didn't want to. No, he didn't. He, he didn't want to. He wanted to hit the front or back rim. You could tell by the look on yep. his face and also Tom Pender's face. I'm too good a free throw shooter, coach. Wanted to miss it and stroked it dead center. Not the end of the Houston have to happen to turn this thing around if you get it in Maynard's hands and foul him. And yet Maynard is going to inbound. Interesting. Little, little interesting, huh, coach? Very, Ross? Very surprising. Interesting. Well, Maynard to inbound. No, he's not. Who does he want? Now he goes to Gwynn. And now to Rodriguez. Got to foul him. Got to foul him. The whistle did not blow until that horn went off. And that is going to do it. It's in the books as Anthony Grant and Tom Pender shake hands as Virginia Commonwealth VCU's Rams with a 73-72 victory as uh, this one was outstanding for 40 minutes.